We're going to talk about this supposed big event that Cliff High is predicting for July 15th, something we did a remote viewing project on. Dick Allgaier here in Honolulu, Hawaii. Edward Reardon is in Austin, Texas. How's the hurricane, Edward? The hurricane, uh, we got lucky here in Austin. It veered to the east. Uh, unfortunately for my friends in Houston and the Houston area, they got they got hit by it. But we didn't even get any rain. We were supposed to get rain and wind, 25 mile an hour winds, and we didn't get anything. We didn't even get a drop of rain this morning. So it completely veered to the east and totally missed us. So you wanted some rain, so you didn't even we get did. rain. We yeah we always could use rain as long as it's not going to rip our roofs off or anything like that. Um, but we didn't get we did. I got a cat here who wants to climb up. What's up, kid? No, hey, we didn't get any man. It's always a good Zoom call when a cat crashes the call. So yeah, she's crashing. In. She's crashing the party, man. <laughs> <laughs> we we're cat friendly here. Okay, yeah. so let me do a couple minutes on the backstory real quick. We're remote viewers. Uh, we have a an organization called Future Forecasting Group. We have uh, some dedicated remote viewers, and we look at cryptocurrencies. We look at future events. We look at historical, uh, so-called woo-woo, interesting targets, and they love to task us with future events. And Cliff High, who's very famous for his web bots, um, he scours the internet and brings linguistics language that people are using um the short story is that humanity has a collective consciousness that is a precognitive awareness and people unknowingly write about things on the internet and cliff has successfully for several decades forecast things so he's been saying something big is a release point there's going to be a lot of release language something uh, around July 15th. So that brings in, Edward, tell them, tell the folks listening how we were tasked and how we work. And it wasn't, we didn't decide to do this. Edward and I have no say in the matter. We're just uh, kept blind, dumb, and happy. And they give us, they, they drop a target ID on us. So how did this come about? That's exactly how it comes about. Uh, we get tasked and we get a target ID and a due date and we do the work and we send it in and then we have a debrief and then we find out what the target is. So we didn't have any idea that it was a cliff high target, that it was a future target. Uh, we didn't have any information as far, we were completely blind to the target. I think in this one, we were double blind, maybe even triple blind on this one. So we had yeah, nothing. Yeah. So. Double blind means we're, we're not told anything about the target. We're not told who it's for. Right. So. And it wasn't specifically, I don't think Cliff was involved. He he didn't request, he wasn't the client or the the originator of our target. It was someone in our organization. Which so, keeps it even tighter. It keeps a real tight knit on the, the tasking and targeting. You, I think I, because I do YouTube more often, I'm a little more tied into social media. You don't follow it too much, but this is blowing up. So here we are, we do this ding, ding, little target, and we go, okay, well, that's interesting. And now everybody's talking about it. So we want to, what we're trying to do is um, not purvey fear porn, not necessarily step back, but just explain how this works and what the remote viewing data might really say. First of all, you hate fear porn remote viewing as much as I do, don't you, Edward? I hate fear porn remote viewing and uh, sensational, well, I'll call it sensational remote viewing, uh, non-verifiable stuff. I, I don't have too much love for those either. So no, I'm not, not into the fear porn stuff. The, some of the most amazing remote viewing, in my opinion, that I do is the verifiable targets, something that's just plain old every day. Just the fact that you can demonstrate the ability to displace a portion of your awareness across space and time and bring back valid data and know enough about the target that you can prove it's valid data. That's mind blowing enough. You don't need to go off to the Pleiades and find the, uh, you know, uh, what's the, what's the plan of the reptilians in the right. year, you know, 3080 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I tell you, my favorite s- targets and sessions are the ones where I learn something. And I get that from verifiable real tar- real targets, real world type targets, you know. I will learn something, I'll go in with a with a deep sense of comprehension. And I tend to not get that too much with um, you know, the the kind of out there stuff. But this one, I mean, the Cliff High one was it was just an interesting project. When when we debriefed it, uh, I was genuinely interested in the sessions, in the tasking, the fact that of what it was, it was based on Cliff's webbot, you know, internet scrubbing software, and and the fact that some of the stuff in our sessions matched the webbot data. That's interesting, man. That's really interesting. And it's, so then I have to ask, is it because that is going to happen or because we're part of the collective from where, from which that web bot data came from? The, we'll, it, we'll have to find out. Yeah, it could be, it's a, it's a very circ, it might be a very circular thing that um, just because Cliff High is pick, picking something up in the collective consciousness and then we task that out. Um, the expectation can become part of the target or the, the, uh, what everybody's building up in, into their mind. It's when you understand how remote viewing works, uh, you can introduce so much noise and contamination into a target. And I'm not, uh, saying this is an excuse or accusing anyone. It's just, that's the nature of the thing. It's a very slippery, slippery yeah. thing. You know, I like to say with, with with targets like this one, it's interesting until it's proven true, and then it becomes fascinating. So for me, th- this whole thing is just, it's an interesting uh, experiment. It's an interesting project, um, specifically because it's based on that web bot data, whatever he calls it, data bots and <laughs> whatever data sets, I think is what he calls it. The fact that we're tasked against that it's I'm kind of mind blown by it. So I have a a level of intense curiosity about what could happen. And that's, that's where I keep it. I just keep it in in that, you know, and we'll just, we'll see what happens. And it's, you know, it's just a fascinating process for, for me, it's just fascinating. Well, it may well be that it is not, an event that happens all on the 15th of July, and then we get total feedback on the 16th of July, we can come on and say, look, this is exactly what we said. It happened yesterday, and we we outlined it perfectly. Sometimes these things um, happen over the horizon, and we tend to, to see them. So the uh, looking forward in consciousness, I always like to say there is no calendar july 15th in the greater consciousness uh, your subconscious doesn't have a delineation between months it's just a a smear of coalescing possibilities so we might wake up on the 16th look at our data and go oh nothing happened we all our data is wrong and then four months from now we might see some things happen, go back and look at our session and go, wow, we, we had that exactly. That's a really interesting uh, concept because I'm, as you're talking about, I'm thinking the, the, the tasking for us was to look at this quote unquote release data. Um, is that what it's called? What he calls it? Release data. Yeah. The release and, event, the, the, uh, the, uh, the event that causes the emotional release Emo- emotional release so um that's more interesting than june 15th so there is a possibility and again I'm, we're looking at possibilities here that we remote viewed a release event and who knows if june f- july 15th is is accurate or not uh because june 15th I'm interested in release event. July I'm 15th. Not too, yeah, July. I, I'm 15th. not too interested in July 15th. I'm I'm interested in in release 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 date or whatever, um, and that that could be part of it too. You know, we we have to factor that in. I think the 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 real slippery slope with, with this kind of stuff, because we I know it, you know it, 
we're dealing with uh, with a serious unknown in, in, in remote viewing. We barely scratch the surface in our comprehension of it. And so when once we put a date to something, that's a real danger zone um, for us to, to, to say, I, on the 15th, something, this is going to happen, you know? And because... Yeah. Well, well our, okay. People, people are going to be asking. So, what is your? What did you see? What did your? What does your data say? And I, our data was. Oh, and I'll give a little plug. People hate this, but it's futureforecastinggroup.com. Uh, we had five remote viewers. We we each had fifteen page sessions. So there's a lot of data to go over, and we did some analysis of it, and we saw the the overlaps, and that. That's up on our private site, futureforecastinggroup.com. It, it, the data was, I would say, inconclusive, but interesting. My own data had a big event that a lot of people see, and it impacts them uh, emotionally. And I, and I had that without knowing the target queue, but it, it, it impacted them. It was significant. But I also had an element in it that seemed contrived, created. I even had data about um, something being transmitted to change your perception of something. Like, um, I didn't say Project Blue Beam, but some way that your nervous system is affected by an impulse or a pulse or EMF. I That kept coming up in my session is... People think they're being impacted this, but it's being laid. Oh, it's being overlaid by, by something. Did you get any of that in your? What What was your session? Oh, about? I totally. I the, the the interesting thing about about your session, you're describing it now, and the session I had, uh, which when when Cliff High released like, um, uh, you know, a post about about it, about our work. I, to, to his web bot info or, and, or he did a podcast about it. What he was describing was basically a lot of elements of my session what there were that there was going to be people who are going to see something like a UFO, mm -hmm. uh, but it's really kind of, I don't know if it's a UFO or not, um, but it's going to kind of, it's not supposed to be seen, but it becomes seen, you know, and yeah. they have a reaction to it, you know? And I actually, I got it. I got the session po right here. Let me, let me just show you. We don't remember our sessions because we do so many. Well, we but did was, this one over a month ago. Yeah. Yeah. So this, this was the idea here with this kind of quote unquote unseen war, like with these kind of cloaked ships and stuff like that. And then here's a guy and it's obviously like, oh my God, look at that thing in the sky because it's kind of breaking through, you know, where it shouldn't be seen and how it kind of is seen. Not unlike your your uh, session about the holographic thing, and that's very close to what what uh, Cliff High was saying. His webbot data was seeing as well. So when I when I heard him say that, I was like, "Oh wow, man!" Again, I don't know. Are we picking up the things from the web from the scrub of of the collective consciousness? Are we picking up an event? I mean, that's what makes it just so fascinating. We're, we're going to have to find out. Just wait and find out. You know, like I say, it's interesting until proven true, and then it becomes fascinating. I'm I'm trying to pull up my session. Um, Cliff loves moon data, and I had some moon data in mind where I I I saw the moon, but I saw men seated at like a conference table controlling something and plotting something like a grid or uh, math calculations that uh, had something to do with the moon. Now, that's just downright weird data. We don't know what, <laughs> you know, we don't know. We'll weird, weird data for a weird target. I mean, it's just, you know. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, this, this tends to blow up on the internet and people really like to, it gathers momentum like a snowball and people add on to it. And, we're just a couple of remote viewers and we do the targets they give us. We don't pick the targets and we do the best we can. Sometimes that's, that's pretty right. good, but that's uh, right. 
will be watching and we'll have analysis. We'll we'll look what happens. And it, again, it may not be the 15th or the 16th. It may be a series of events that that happen and then coalesce into something. And I think Cliff uh, often he would say that too that it that it it may. I haven't actually watched his segment on what he's predicting, but I think uh, it may be a series of events that build on each other. Right. Like so. something happens, you, we may not hear about it in the news or whatever, but it starts a cascade uh, of, of of something bigger. That that could be the case. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll be I'll be watching, you know, with intense curiosity. Well, one thing for sure is we're entering a really interesting period of hyper novelty we're going to see some things we've never seen before we're already at, it's like every day we're in a new world here you know with all this stuff going on it's just it's an incredible time to be alive it really is i mean it's scary and it's crazy but it is an amazing time to be here yeah well, we're documenting it. We're watching it. Good to talk to you, Edward. We got to go. We've got other targets. You know, every week they give us another blind target, and we yeah. have no idea where we go. We just get the data. On, on to the next target. That's that's our life. <laughs> yep. All right. See you later, man. Bye-bye. All right, man.